In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the seal kit between your pump and motor assembly, just like the ones found on the common pressure fryer we have behind me, as well as many other models. Keep in mind, anytime that we're rebuilding the pump, or we find a leaking seal, or in the event that we're replacing a motor, the seal kit should be replaced at this time. This job is performed easiest at a workbench just like the one we have in front of me, but depending on which model you are working on, this can also be performed while on the fryer as well. To replace the seal kit, start by removing the two flange bolts that mount the pump to the motor. Now that the two bolts are removed, we can remove the pump body from the motor and expose our seal components. Once we have them separated, now we can remove these seal components and set them to the side. Be sure to wipe off the shaft of any oil or grease residue to ease the new seal kit installation going back on. If replacing the motor, this step will not be necessary. Now that we have them separated, we can set our motor to the side and turn our focus to the pump itself. We want to make sure that we get the inside of this pump cavity clean from any grease or oil buildup so that when we go to remove this inner seal inside the pump, it will come out with ease. We want to pay special attention to the area right around this seal and make sure that it is free and clear of any and all grease buildup. This will help greatly in the removal of this seal. After we have the inside of the pump housing clean, we can go ahead and remove our four bolts that hold our pump cap in place. Now that we have our pump cap bolts removed, we can go ahead and separate our cap. At this time, we wanna make sure that we inspect our pump O-ring as well for any nicks or flat spotting, as this is a good time to go ahead and replace this O-ring. And now we can see our Teflon rollers. This is a good time to inspect these rollers, make sure that they are not flat spotted or undersized in any degree. If so, now is a good time to go ahead and replace those. So we'll go ahead and set these off to the side for now, as well as our rotor. With these components removed, now we can see the seal on the other side that we will be driving out from this side. So this is where we can go ahead and use a punch and a hammer to go ahead and tap that seal out from this other side. Now that we have our seal out, this is where we can make sure that we go ahead and clean the inside of this pump cavity so that when we go back together with our new seal, it will be easy to push that in. Once we have this cleaned, now we can go ahead and set this down. Once we have our new seal kit parts out, we can go ahead and set the shaft side over to the side as we don't need those currently. We can take our old seal and set it out of the way. And now that we have our new seal, we want to pay special attention to the side that has the groove in the seal. This side will go face down inside the pump to where the shiny side of this will be facing our motor. It's recommended to do use a food grade lubricant to put a light film of oil on the O-ring. This will aid with installing the seal. However, we do not recommend using frying oil as this can dry and cause premature seal failure. Once we have the seal down in there, now is where we can take the ball end of our screwdriver so that we don't damage it and use it to assist us in pushing that down. We will feel it kind of snap into place. Now that we have our pump seal in place, we can go ahead and flip this back over, go ahead and set our rotor back on. I would like to make note real quick that our pump is eccentric, so you can notice that the hole is off center. This will be important note when we go back together in a few moments to be aware of. We can go ahead and set our rollers in. And it's important to note when we go back together with our pump cap, 
you can see here that there is a slight notch on this side of the cap only, as well as a notch on our pump housing itself. Those two notches need to line up together when we go back together. Now we can go ahead and put our four pump cap bolts back in place. Now that we have our pump put back together, we'll set this off to the side for a moment and bring our attention back to the motor. We will start to put this seal kit back together by starting with the flat washer going onto the motor first. Then we will go with our recessed washer with the recess facing towards the pump. Now we can go on with our spring spacer. as well as our spring that goes over that spacer and inside of that recessed washer that we just put on. And last, we have the other part of our seal which will go on, but we again want to make sure that we use just a slight amount of food grade lubricant as this will aid greatly with the seal going on and not causing any damage to the seal. So now that we have that on, we also want to make sure that this recess side is sticking out. You can use the instructions in the sheet for reference. But what can happen is this black piece can actually be flipped around the wrong way. So we want to make sure that we have that recess side facing out. Now that we're aware of that, we can go ahead and install our seal on the shaft and push it into place. You can see that it kind of snapped into place there with our spring. And now we're ready for our pump assembly to go back together with our motor. When going back together, it's important to notice that the shaft on the motor is D-shaped. This is important to note in the orientation of the shaft because just like the shaft is D-shaped, so is the impeller inside of our pump cavity. So you can see if I have the pump in this rotation, that it sits up perfectly in center with the inside of the pump cavity. If I turn the pump cavity, however, 180 degrees, you can see that it's no longer in the center. So it's important to have the pump cavity in this orientation so that the rotor, you can see the D-shape, and now we can line our D-shape up on our shaft accordingly so that when we go back together, this will make this process much easier in terms of lining up. Now that we have that pushed on, we can go ahead and start our upper flange bolt. Now we can go ahead and flip it up and get our other flange bolt in there. 